When I was hired to write Private Wars, I knew it would be seen in the theater someday. It's the most original true story about a Jewish boy on the front lines after D-Day I've ever heard. A breakthrough role for any Jewish actor. The true story is based on the life of Maury Sheket, now 90 years old, living in San Diego. And he hired me to write it from his memoirs. And I told him, Jerry, your story will be known by people before you die. The movie starts when I'm 10 in New York playing stickball. I'm the only Jew, and on top of that, my father had died a couple years ago, so it's just my mother and me. Back then, that was a big deal, so sure, all the other kids, they made it hard on me, but that just meant I had to train hard. I had to be the essential player to win. I get so good they formed the team behind me. And soon, I get so good they formed the team behind me. Sure. Some of the other kids, they took shots at me, suckered me, tripped me up. But every scab I came home with was a sign that I chose to stick with it. Nobody made me play so hard. I, I did it because it was where I go in my head when things go bad. Jerry, he uh, fell in love at 18 and he was supposed to get married. The war is in full tilt boogie. I'm supposed to go to New Jersey and be a part of the death soldiers working in the army accounting office. But suddenly, D-Day surprised the hell out of the Krauts and the Allied army needed every boot on the ground. I was ordered into the infantry and in 72 hours I'm in Fort Benning. Georgia, in the middle of the summer. They send this homie to Georgia, my hometown. Put him into my squad of white supremacists. I'll be damned if I can terminate my team with Jew blood. <laughs> I'd gotten a lot of crap for being Jewish in my home suburb, but this was on a whole new level. I kept thinking to myself, I I'm just Jerry. Jerry Factor, a kid from New York fighting for his country. But basic training's only a couple of weeks. I can make it through and then they'll split us up in Europe. Private Factor, you will crawl out of my army, you will drop out of basic training before you disgrace it, is that clear? But that did not happen. The harder they kicked him, the more Jerry's superiors kept watching him. The smartest, the toughest, they knew they needed him on the front line. I wasn't a hero. I was just a kid that kept getting up when I was down. I counted the days to deployment. But for some reason, commander of training Lieutenant Anderson did not split up me, Rafer, and Brady. What? No, listen, Brady. This is good news. I mean, you hear all about losing your buddies in the war, watching them get shot to hell, stepping on landmines. All we lose is our pet Jew. Let's make a bet. Ten bucks on my order to kill him. I'll take that bet. Once they're in France, Brady and Rafer decide to put Jerry on point in every dangerous mission. You think I'd let everybody know that a Jew beat me? No, sir. We need you up there, Factor. The foxhole, way up there near the enemy lines, calling in coordinates. You think you can do that? Yes, sir. Factor, there's a minefield up ahead. You take that fat ass Andy with you and clear a path. A factor. That pillbox has killed every man there up on that hill. Now you strap on that flamethrower and you take out that gun. Woo! Go on! <laughs> go get him, factor! Hey, he looks like one of them clowns in the carnival games you get to shoot at. Look at him go. <laughs> no.
They saw me coming and they ran. That's one way to take out the pillbox. It wasn't all frontline fighting for Factor. When the platoon was stationed out of town, the lieutenant and general, who loved the guy, sent him into town to report. He noticed they made custom boot gaiters like the top officer's guy and made them for the officers in his platoon. He came back with wine, cheese, eggs, and the boots, and he was the king of the party. Damn, I hate that son of a bitch. I lost my virginity to a 35-year-old French woman who said she loved me for liberating France. <laughs> I figure with those breasts, I don't need a reason. And I say thank you. And I go back to my squad with the biggest smile on my face. He gets promoted and seduced? We gotta take him out before he outranks us. That's when they went too far. They moved me up to the new front line. I was used to it, but my friends weren't. They knew an airstrike was ordered for that entire square mile, and they sent me in anyway. I, I saw my four best friends blow to pieces. I walked out with just Pablo. The smiles on their faces told me I couldn't let them do this. I had to face them. We got a German village up ahead with 50 men and two panthers in it. Jerry! I volunteer to go general, but only if Rafer goes with me. He knows how to spot just as well as I can, and if only one of us makes it, then you still get your bombardment coordinates. What? Go with God, son. This is bullshit. Welcome to my world. Jerry and Rafer crept in during the night. Rafer had never been so scared in his whole career. When dawn broke, they radioed in the details, and they had to plant explosives in the places the Germans would use for cover once the battle began. So they set traps and mines all over the defensive line. Don't let him back alive! All hell broke loose when that first mortar hit. A thousand Germans swarmed all around us. Holy shit! I've never seen so many crowds this close to me in my life! The finale of the film revolves around the offensive into a key city holding back the army after the Battle of the Bulge. Brady and Factor lead the unit into the city, house to house fighting, gunfights, but once everyone else in the unit gets killed, they know it's time to end this. I don't remember anything after that. Just the look on his face as he held that rock above my head. And the explosion. I woke up in a hospital in France. The war ended in three weeks later. The war was... Confusing. So confusing. Who wins and who dies seems so arbitrary on one hand, yet completely... Necessary, on the other hand. Jerry returned home, married his high school sweetheart, and lived to be a very old man in San Diego, where I met him. I felt very honored. I'm just Jerry. Jerry Factor. A kid from New York that wanted to fight for his country and do some good and make it out in one piece. I uh, hired the screenwriter because I've never heard a story like it before. I mean, I was scared at times, and sometimes I said, screw it. Let them get me killed. That way it can be over quicker. But for some reason, I'm alive, and, well, they're all dead. Why? I like to think it's so that my story could be told and shared with the world. Well, it's got the element that any memorable war film has to have. 
a great character to be in the lead. Moving personal scenes, original set pieces, action scenes that are great, and the type of story that box office stores want to play the lead in. Let's get this thing into the right hands. Jerry's story is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, from an old man that knows what that means. All right.